Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. Today we're going to be working on upgrading the CPU on this Elite Book. So I did a video a few days ago doing the graphics and other performance of this machine, you know, some gaming and, and synthetic benchmarks. And that was with its Core i5-3320M. So that's a dual core, four thread processor. I went out and I bought this guy, if I can pick him up. This is a Core i7-3320, MQ, which is the fastest 35 watt Core i7 I could buy. And the reason why this is important is because this is still a four thread, eight, excuse me, a four core, eight thread CPU, and still only being 35 watt. Now there are faster uh, 45 watt CPUs, but because this laptop is a 35 watt CPU, I wanted to stick with another 35 watt CPU. I have put uh, 45 watt CPUs into 35 watt systems and they struggle to keep up with the heat that the faster CPU generates. So let's go over real quick uh, of some of the things you'll need if you're wanting to do this. Uh, first thing you'll want is just a spray can to clean out the computer because it is pretty dusty in there sometimes. You'll want a good supply of some clean Q-tips, some rubbing alcohol, and a screwdriver with a couple bits. You want a flathead and a Phillips. Now one of my favorite things about this laptop is just how easy it is to upgrade this system. One switch gets the back cover off. Another one removes the battery. And if you were to buy this system, even if you don't plan on upgrading the CPU, I highly recommend removing the fan to clean out the system. Because these are now eight plus years old, they are going to be dusty if they've received any kind of use. And one thing I love about this computer is most of its screws are captive, which means they stay in the holes that they're in and you don't lose them. So the screws are still in the fan, I turn it over, and they're not going anywhere, I don't have to worry about losing them. Let's take our spray duster, hold the fan so it doesn't spin, and just dust it out. Now normally if you weren't upgrading your CPU, you can dust out that heat sink as well. Now for the CPU, again this is some super easy to upgrade. The screws are numbered, it's one, two, three, and four. We're just going to partially loosen these, and I apologize for doing this around the camera here. So we're just giving a light turn on these to loosen them, not unscrewing any one all the way. And now we'll go ahead and loosen them further. Okay, now that is loose, I can pull the heat sink out. Now, when I first bought this, I did go ahead and put fresh thermal grease on here because uh, they often come just slathered in the thickest, nastiest, oldest, dried out thermal paste you can imagine. And so that is something that on any of these, whether it be a, a soldered CPU or whatever, I go ahead and update and clean up the thermal paste because it's inexpensive to do and has a fairly big effect on overall system performance. Get off of here as well. So this is really easy to clean up because I literally just put this on a couple days ago. 
so it's cleaning right off. I don't need a whole lot of the uh, isopropyl alcohol to clean it up. But we'll clean up that uh, CPU cooler. Just get off the last remnants of it with the alcohol. All right, so now, next thing we're gonna do is just look at the difference between the two. You can see how much bigger the Core i7 chiplet is compared to the i5. And that's because this has the four physical cores where this just has two physical cores. Let's switch out our bits. This is where the flathead comes into play. All right. And this is a zero force insertion slot. And so no force required to insert the chip. And we'll do the same. We just need to line up the gold triangle where the other one was here at this edge. And it sat flat in there. We'll just tighten it down. Easy as that. Now what we're gonna do is, because this one has been handled and stuff, probably has my greasy fingerprints all over it. Just a little bit more alcohol and a clean Q-tip. Now I use this bottle of rubbing alcohol only for working on computers, so I don't have to worry about any cross-contamination or anything like that. Get anything gross with it. Take a dry side. Had a little bit more on there than I meant to. Make sure that's nice and dry. Looking good. All right, so I just have this Cooler Master Thermal Paste. Uh, this, I'm using this up just because I have this. Uh, normally, I'll use like a Arctic Silver Ceramic or something like that. Really doesn't matter that much. We're not hitting super high temperatures. We're not overclocking anything like that. We just want to put a little bit on the CPU. That is plenty. It does not need a lot. All right. And this, you want to be real gentle. We'll switch out our heads. And for this, you want to put just a little bit of weight here in the center. And what we're doing is we are just getting these to engage into their screw holes. So that way we have even clamping pressure. And that way we don't damage the chiplet there. So I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember the old uh, AMD Athlon days, but when those first launched, it was actually fairly common for people to put too much clamping force on one side of their chip and actually chip off a corner of it and destroy a brand new $300 CPU. We'll put our fan back. old CPU out of the way Put the cover now I have new RAM coming right now this only has eight gigs of RAM so we have uh, two sticks of four I have a matching set of uh, six, eight, eight gigs so a total of 16 gigs of RAM coming for this system get that on just right that oh that's the battery um, put that in and then we'll lock up both sides and now all we're going to do is just boot it on to make sure that worked and that it recognizes the new CPU we're just going to go to F1 to system information 
and we see here we have the Intel Core i7 3632QM at 2.2 gigahertz. Now this is a slightly so slower clock speed than the dual core Core i5, uh, but it is the fastest four core processor. All right, we'll go ahead and just make sure Windows boots up. All right, we are loaded into Windows. Awesome. Obviously, it's just loading up here. And we'll do plug it in. Because we had it unplugged before. Make sure we're on best performance. And now we'll just run the synthetic benchmark. And it made us correct it. We'll go real quick to task manager, performance, CPU. We'll go to logical processors. And we have all eight logical processors showing up. We have four cores, eight logical processors. Just making sure everything is showing correctly. And we will run the benchmark. And I will fast forward this to the end. All right, and we are done. So the difference between the two is not great on most of these because obviously we're using the same uh, CPU, not same CPU, the same uh, memory. We're using the same SSD. I find it funny that the 3D graphics is a little bit higher. It's uh, 523 versus the 2D graphics is actually a little bit lower. So originally it was 511 for the 3D and 463 for the 2D, but the CPU mark is almost 3,000 points better. Again, it is running at a slower clock speed, so the single core thread performance will be a little bit slower, uh, but it makes up for it significantly by having more threads and more cores. So we'll definitely be doing some more specific performance testing on here uh, and definitely look forward to that. Uh, also, we'll rerun this test a couple more times, just kind of get, uh, make sure nothing is running in the background that affects it. And that's something that happens a lot. Uh, Windows updates will run, things like that. So we'll be getting the best score we can uh, just as comparison. Anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer those. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazing day.